the center of our gut feelings. First time Mussolini attacked, I backed off because he was successful in communicating an intent to harm me, which caused me to feel fear, the most primal and visceral of human emotions. The first key to unlocking the communication code is to understand that when we com communicate, feeling comes first. Emotions will always trump intellect, at least in the short term. This emotive form of communication, however, ultimately didn't get Gussolini the response he wanted. On its own, the attack wasn't very persuasive. Instead of shooing me away, Gussolini made me angry. Effective communicators know how to get the response they want because they understand how to tailor a message to the person who's listening. They know the second key to unlocking the communication code is that the meaning of a communication is the response you get. Because Gussolini couldn't tell me his story, I had to imagine his story for myself. Uh, the first story I came up with was that he was simply a psycho goose trying to harm me for no reason I could understand. The second story I came up with after talking to my neighbor was the story of a dad protecting his soon-to-be hatched goslings. Both stories accurately described what was happening, but the stories led to very different endings. The psycho goose made me angry. The dad goose made me feel protective of Gussolini himself. In this book, I call such stories maps, and the world the stories describe as the territory. The third key to unlocking the communication code is, therefore, the map is not the territory. Each story captures a different piece of reality. No one story captures it all. The key to effective communication is to find the best story to use to convey your understanding of the world to the greatest number of people. In politics, we tell each other stories all the time. Think about it. Politics is really nothing more than a large set of stories. The United States of America began as a story that the founders and framers told about a society that could live in harmony around the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The country was held together after the Great Depression and through a war by a story told by Franklin Roosevelt, which he called the New Deal. Ronald